Oof. Hey guys, Chevy Volt vlog number 75. So my 2017 Chevy Volt has an oil gasket leak and I didn't know for months because it leaked into the paneling. So it, the paneling absorbed a lot of the oil. It was not until I started smelling burning oil from my exhaust that I realized, oh my gosh, this is uh, pretty bad. So a lot of the oil just got trapped on the panels. The panels absorbed all the oil. The panels were right next to the oil, the exhaust pipe. So it started smoking. So this is my new vlog entry of me repairing this uh, or re putting a new gasket on the oil pan, the lower oil pan. So as you go take a look, uh, I have it you know, on ramps and it's basically leaking on all that gray or slight white gasket material. So it's been leaking all over following the panels. And as you can see, it's all wet all the way down to there with all oil, you know, moisture and stuff. Anyways, super oily, super, I've cleaned up a lot of this stuff, but it's still very oily everywhere. I did check the oil filter and it was not leaking. In fact, um, the mechanic who took a look at this before this, like a few months ago said it wasn't leaking at all. He tightened it, I tightened it myself. But as you can see, a lot of that oil was caught there. I bought myself a new oil, uh, lower oil, pan from GM directly because it has the the new boat um, and gasket for the oil drain plug as well as uh, it has all the correct sizing and fit so technically a third party will work too but I was worried that the pins won't match or anything else like that not much it does come with the 10 millimeter bolts for and gaskets on each of them not gaskets but they're like little yeah little gasket like things I don't know what they are or grommets Anyways, I also got some pry to, uh, some pry tools, thinking that I don't I don't have these, so I decided to buy one. But you also need something like this. This is actually a what 15 millimeter by four ish millimeter uh, rectangle bar. There's two um, little slots on the oil on the oil pan that you could slot that in, so you could leverage out. You also need a 10 millimeter uh, socket wrench to you know take off the bolts, as well as I use a 90 degree uh, Ryobi angle drill to quickly get the machine bolts off. Of course, you got to change the oil too, so get yourself an oil filter and some new fresh oil, and you're going to need some new gasket maker. So I got this black, um, ultra black from Primtex, and I've used this before when I did other um, oil pan and transmission um, pan changes. So it worked for me for other cars, so it's been pretty cool. Again, you know, you need some WD-40, some brake clean, some um, some carb cleaner, so that you can clean up some other oil stuff, you know, on the thing. So, after using a 10 millimeter um, wrench, go ahead and loosen it, and then use your angle drill to quickly take off all those machine uh, screws or bolts uh, off of it. So, it makes life a lot easier with a with an angle uh, drill attachment or angle drill and um, with a battery operator and angle drill, it saves a lot of time. This whole process took it will take about a day and a half, probably. Taking off the oil pan took about a good, probably, I don't know, 40 minutes, 50 minutes. And of course, I'm not a professional mechanic or anything else, so if you're doing any of this, you're doing it at your own risk. So um, the paneling and stuff, um, taking that off is like a 10 or 20 minutes or whatever it is. But getting the car ramped up, the oil pan off took a good probably two hours or so if you're doing it by yourself. Um, if you don't have this pry tool, there you need two of them because you, you could work one at a time or you could put two in there. But you definitely need something like that because there are pins holding this thing straight down. So there's a lot two alignment pins um, holding this oil um, pan, you know, to the engine. So unlike Nissan's and some other Toyotas I've worked on before. The adhesive, you know, is pretty weak, but at the same time, that uh, the two bolts prevent this thing from being able to use something else, like a slight tap of a hammer or something else like that. So, and of course, I'm not a professional mechanic or anything else. So, if you're doing any of this, you're doing it at your own risk. Uh, work each side and stuff, and pry it slowly, pry it out, and using the two notches and and so and stuff. So, I'm actually have the notch. The notch actually helps a little to open it up and then I can use a pallet knife or some other knife to start cutting around the edges of it to open it up. And by cutting, I mean just mean the slotting through to weaken the gasket material so I could actually 
pull the straight thing down with a with a pry bar. The pry bar, I'm not really using it to pry. I'm just using it to pull down because of the angle it has, and that's nice and thin. Lots of oils to clean up, so just be careful. There is, um, of course, this is not a how-to. This is my experience of what's happening. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna make a how-to video. There's plenty of how to change your oil pan uh, videos on YouTube if you just do a search on it. So as you can see, I'm basically scraping it with a, um, with a razor. You could use, the best thing is to actually use a plastic razor. Again, I'm not a professional, so normally you're supposed to use a plastic razor on this, but I just use a very, very careful um, uh, blade to scrape it off. The reason why you always use a plastic uh, razor is because, you know, the what you're scraping against is probably aluminum, and if you're not careful, you're basically going to scratch it. So um, what I'm doing right now is slowly just scraping off um, the silicone RT, the old RTV uh, silicone, and then I'm using a nylon brush to rub off the rest of it. So eventually I'm gonna you know, use a smaller blade uh, and more carefully get closer and closer and start scraping all this off. This scraping and stuff took about a good 20, 30 minutes to scrape most of it off. And then at the end of it, I just basically used a, um, a kitchen scouring pad to basically take off the rest of it and rub it off. And then also a nylon brush to uh, to to slowly take off any other uh, remaining pieces. And then also a um, screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, to slowly rub off stuff that are in the crevices, because I didn't want any of the old RTV silicone to be there. So I I make sure to keep it clean very well. Um, I found out that you of course you use WD-40 and it melts this old material really fast. So you know, I didn't do it on this one because I was too afraid. I didn't know about it, uh, that the WD-40 would melt silicone. So I just used the scouring pad and slowly did this. It took a good more like total to clean all the silicone off of this one, off the lower part of the engine, probably 40 minutes or so. So what a, what a time. It was a time suck. I'm going to be honest. It, well, it was, and this is all upside down. So if, if you can see, most of the stuff is falling downward and not inside the engine. <laughs> so that's pretty neat. So I'm using a screwdriver just to do a, a slight rub against any tiny little crevice stuff. So of course, not a professional, do this at your own risk if you're actually doing this. But this is just a you know vlog entry for what I'm doing on my Chevy Vote. And I'm basically not a professional mechanic. Uh, but yeah, so scrape, scrape, scrape. I'm just cleaning up the rest of the stuff. Like this is, this is my pet peeve because I've owned the Chevy. This is like 95,000 miles on my 2017 Chevy Volt. I've heard that this gas material was bad for some Chevy Volts from 2016, 2017, but it basically leaked on their first 5,000 miles or something like that, you know, and people brought it in for warranty. And I was reading the stories on the forums and a lot of them basically constantly leaked afterwards because I think it was, they didn't get enough time for that new silicone to cure. Now, I'm not sure if, you know, 95,000 miles later and I only used like probably 50% of that is using the engine, actual oil, you know, and pumping the engine with that and not the batteries. Um, so technically this motor only has about 50,000 miles on it, you know, that I've used with gasoline engine. Um, the rest I've used with, um, with the, by using the EV mode. So this seems kind of like 50,000 miles seems kind of low for, for something to leak like this. So to be honest, this is the first time I actually had to repair something that's like under a hundred thousand miles for, um, for an engine to actually leak, um, oil, like from the gasket. So it's new to me and, you know, normally I work on Nissans and Toyotas and, and Hondas and, you know, that I've owned before. So this is new to me. So I'm using this new get this, the black, um, ultra black Primtex because I figured I used that before and it works really well. Oh, actually you could see the two notches where my hand is right now. There's and under that black bar, there's those two notches we're working on right now. Those are the notches for that, um, to put a bar in there and just to pry the thing down with two. And that's the only way to, for me to actually open this thing because there's actually pins that go straight down. You can see that the pins are right next to it. Um, but yeah, before you ever do and start this thing, you have to, of course, drain all the oil. Now, what I'm doing right now is that after I cleaned up most of the, all, pretty much all the, um, the silicone, I am actually spraying, um, 
I think brake cleaner or carb cleaner. I think it's carb cleaner eh, or brake cleaner. I don't know which one it was, but I want to make sure all the oil from the sides and from that center part is all gone because once I want to make sure everything's clean and there's no oil or grease that's that's on it that might be bad for the new uh, RTV uh, silicone to set and cure on it. So I want to make sure it's nice and clean. I'm using new paper towels and rags and stuff to make sure there's no lint and stuff either. either. So. Yeah, I'm just fine tuning and making sure if I see anything new or anything other that's still there, I just clean it off again. And of course, I'm cleaning off any engine parts that might have grease or oil that might drip onto uh, the thing. I'm gonna let it sit for about 15, 20 minutes, but as you can see, it looks really super clean and dry. It's time to actually put the RTV stuff. So let's go ahead and do that. But before that, WD-40 does melt that old uh, RTV stuff. So if you wanna quickly clean your your old uh, oil gas oil pan, you could do that with WD-40 and clean it with um, a carb cleaner later to get rid of any WD-40 grease. Anyways, read the instructions for this Permatex Ultra Black. You have to actually, um, after you put the bead around the whole thing, you wanna put it immediately to the engine and not touch any side walls, be really careful about it. And you have to basically you know, um, bolt it on. I bolted it on from the center bolts. Like if you divide the, the oil pan in half. I basically did one after the other very lightly. And then um, you just have to let it sit for about an hour. It takes about one hour for it to cure before you actually um, tighten it to torque spec. I think torque spec for this was like, I don't remember. I think it's by 20 pounds. I don't remember how much I put. But this was like about, um, after, you, after an hour, then you could torque spec it. Then after 24 hours, it finally cures. And then you can actually put oil in it. So I think a lot of folks who rush it and put oil in it will probably have, you know, it's probably not as good and it might actually you know, be bad for the, the curing effect of this thing. So after 24 hours, I put in new oil, put a new filter in and check the, for leaks, no leaks whatsoever. Um, so it's, it's cool. I let it run for about, I think I drove it around the block a few times and I went back underneath. There's no leaks whatsoever, which is really, really cool. Yay, it worked. And, you know, like I said, I waited a good 24 hours for, before I even put the oil in. So, yeah, it's nice and clean. Now, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start cleaning the, all the other oil on the panels so it doesn't steam up with oil and burn oil like this again. I eventually had to use brake clean or uh, brake cleaner to clean the entire underside of my exhaust pipes as well as other panels that were basically oil drenched. And afterwards, it's nice and clean like that. So very clean afterwards. The panel, of course, is still soaked with oil. So I had to use a degreaser and put a five gallon bucket, put some degreaser in there and just let it soak. And and, and the soak melted a lot of the oil that was caked on so that it's it actually took, you know, came off of it. But I soaked it for a good hour while I was working on the car. So I used a Zep Industrial degreaser and eventually all the grease and most of the grease came off of it. I took off like probably two or three panels and soaked it, dried it and let it just air dry in the sun. I also took this opportunity to start repairing some of this uh, crappy paneling on the bottom of the underside. They rip and tear and you know, they just start tearing apart and breaking apart. So I, after every year, pretty much I repair parts of it. And I put some, um, now I'm not a professional, do this at your own risk, but what I do is I basically use some, some fiberglass screen and epoxy so I could remake parts of the panel so they work again. So I can actually put the screws and clips back on. And like I said, these things break pretty much every, uh, every year after a winter or something else, or if something actually bumps onto it, it starts tearing or it gets soaked and stuff. Um, so I really don't, you know, I have to repair it every year anyways. So like I said, do it at your own risk. I'm not a professional here. Anyways, industrial cleaner to clean my driveway. Yes, I got rid of a lot of that oil that was on the driveway. And I still had to do one or two more cycles of that uh, industrial cleaner. I also took the opportunity to actually, you know, check the fluid levels for the coolant. You don't ever want those coolant levels to be too low. And you want them to be nice and topped off as well as, you know, change the internal um, in cabin filter and also the engine filter. It's so simple that, you know, 
anyone could do it and also it doesn't take too much time to do it anyways it's every year or actually for the engine filter i do it every two years but for the internal cabin i do it one year but i've made videos on that so check those videos out on my channel as well as you know as well as other things anyways a lot of maintenance stuff a lot of cool stuff anyways thanks for watching guys my name is Tony w and this is the show you vlog number 75 i hope you enjoyed this uh journey with me and of course my you know the story so Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.